Hello again, I am Blunty. Subscribers and loyal viewers will recognize this. This is Devil's Crevice, a uh, gaming rig that I built uh, July-ish last year, I think. And Devil's Crevice was a fantastic rig. It served me very, very well. Unfortunately, it did not survive the transition to this build back here, which is my current main rig, R2 See-Through, because uh, several of the most vital components were donated to make that rig live. But... I have reason to rebuild Devil's Crevice. So we're doing Devil's Crevice 2.0, essentially, for a couple of different reasons, actually. Uh, one of the reasons was the other day I was streaming some Forza from my PC, and streaming Forza from the same PC uh, as you're running OBS on and capturing the window because of the Windows Store and the way the you know the games and stuff operate from through the Windows Store, and the it was just and OBS isn't quite ready for DX12, and, and it, it was just kind of a huge pain in the ass, and it was causing some stuttering on my stream. Gameplay was perfectly fine, beautifully slick, smooth, wonderful, but the streaming had its own issues so I was starting to talk about you know just running the game or running the stream from a separate PC so that's one idea one of the other reasons is I think it might be handy for me to have a sort of dedicated VR system set up so I can have the VR unit I just got the OS VR HDK2 which I will be doing a video about very very soon now um, but I, it's a you know connecting and disconnecting it from this rig because I'm you have know, used the HDMI out from this for one of the monitors and you have to disconnect that to go into the VR thing it's just you know a bit of a pain in the ass to do that swapping all the time so if I could just leave it set up all the time on a rig that would be handy the other final most important reason in fact to revive this rig bring it back to life is i have a whole bunch of parts that uh, need reviewing and um, one of those parts is a cooler and as you can see there's a custom water loop cooler back there so pulling that apart to review a cooler uh, not quite so appropriate i've also got some fans and an ssd let me tell you about them actually first up is the phenotic hex 2.0 cpu cooler which i first saw at e3 earlier this year and indeed made a video about and became deeply intrigued with its approach to keeping temperatures and noise level down. It's a hybrid device using both a traditional heatsink and fan to dissipate the heat drawn from the CPU, which it can do passively like any other heatsink and fan combo, but it's also got a thermoelectric cooling plate to actively pull heat away from the CPU. This is not a brand new concept, but a rare one still because it can bring with it some issues like making things so cool that condensation forms and water droplets collecting inside your computer isn't a super desirable thing. So Phenotic addressed this with clever onboard monitoring to control the thermoelectric cooler plate which will prevent it from reaching that dew point and causing the issue in the first place. So what we wind up with is a very compact hybrid cooler which in theory should provide the kind of cooling efficiency usually seen in big chunky heavy 240 liquid cooled rigs. I will of course be testing this out and reporting back in a dedicated review video soon. Next up, there's Corsair's new Super Beastie SSD, the Corsair Neutron Series XTI. In this case, the big honkin' 480GB flavor. It's also available in 240GB, 960GB, and a Pavlovian response-inducing 1920GB versions. Whatever the size, the Neutron Series XTI SSDs are Corsair's top-of-the-line monsters designed for and marketed to the dedicated PC gamers and media content creators out there. Beyond being merely a very, very fast SSD, there's also stuff in there like an expanded cache, enhanced error correction, and even power loss protection to help keep your data safe should you unexpectedly lose power. Basically, I think what Corsair is saying is this is as fast and consistent and reliable as a SATA 3 SSD can get. Beyond this, the only way to get faster is one of those PCIe connected M.2 critters, which not all motherboards can even support. This guy will also soon be getting its own dedicated review video. And finally, another Corsair product. They're a new ML120 Pro LED Premium Magnetic Levitation Bearing Fans. Sounds pretty fancy for a fan, right? Well, the name says it all. Corsair's fans, which Devil's Crevice already uses, by the way, but an updated tweaked design. New LED lighting mounted at the hub to shine through the clear frosted fan blades, so they should look friggin' awesome. Red, white, and blue are available. I went red because Devil's Crevice naturally rocks a red and black look. But more than looks, it's the new magnetic levitation bearings that's the real trick here. Rather than traditional bearings, the new magnetic levitation technology makes these fans quieter, the reduced rotational friction delivers a higher performance, and also with that comes less wear and tear, so they'll last longer as well. And they'll control within a 2000 RPM range, so you can balance noise and airflow with a lot of finesse.
Alrighty gang, here we are, the old Devil's Crevice, so what's left of Devil's Crevice? Now I'm not going to do a sort of full on build log for this thing, I'm just going to come in with the iPhone cam from time to time and sort of catch up on the progress as I go and let you know what the install process is like, particularly uh, replacing the cooler and you know, sort of uh, how, how that is all fitting together, because coolers can, well they can either be really really easy or really really kind of pain in the ass to put on there. The Hex 2.0 is apparently easy to fix, but I'll let you know as we go, as we pull off the old Corsair uh, cooler there. We're going to pull out that fan, we're going to pull out that fan, going to pull out that fan. We're probably going to have to lift the motherboard out of there in order to get to the back plate behind the cooler to switch that out for the new cooler. Um, and the SSDs are sort of uh, around, the, around the back here and you know, over here, but we'll get to that. That's, that's, that's the easy part. The tricky part is just pulling the motherboard out. Well, I say tricky. The, um, <laughs> the most fiddly part is pulling the motherboard out there and replacing the cooler. So, let's get to it. That was actually totally painless. Super simple upgrade process on all accounts. Fans in without a problem, as you'd expect. They're exactly the same size fans, even the same brand of fans, just the new ones. We'll see how they look in just a minute. I haven't powered it up yet, so moment of truth, fingers crossed in just a second. Uh, the installation of the CPU cooler we need to talk about. It went in super simply, exactly like they told me at E3. Basically, you pop the back plate on just like you do with any other heat sink, and uh, the fan, as you saw in the footage there, uh, sort of slides out of the center. You pop a screwdriver down into the channel there, screw it into place on the little brackets and you're basically done pop the fan back in pop the little shroud back over it and it's done it is super super simple to do um of course uh, ssd i mean that's just an ssd it installed like any other ssd we'll talk more about it in its own video when we start testing how fast it actually is but here's the moment of truth i'm uh, plugged in as you can probably see there somewhere there should be a little green light on the motherboard telling me the power's on uh, plugged into the monitor here so we can see if we boot up huh Good sounds, good sounds. You can see the light on the uh, cooler through the window here. and Yeah, I can feel airflow coming through it. Oh, the fans look awesome from the front of the case. I'll have to give you a little cut in video of that. And uh, it sounds like they're running at a decent speed and I'm not getting anything on my monitor. Okay, hang on a sec. This monitor's a piece of crap. Sometimes you have to unplug it and plug it in for it to actually be recognized. Otherwise, just sort of... I don't know. It's always annoyed me. Anyway, fingers crossed. We should be seeing some BIOS and some Windows booting. So I think the drive in here is still... Yes, yeah, there's still an active Windows installation. Hooray! Windows 7 blocks of it. Okay. So, <coughs> that's it. Success! That was amazing. I, uh, honestly a little bit surprised. Whenever you do something like this, there's always some sort of problem. And I don't want to curse myself here, because who knows what's going to happen when I actually log into that. <laughs> and, uh probably come back to these fans again but again they're just they're just fans i mean they do the job and i mean they're sitting right next to my microphone here and you can probably barely hear them because i can barely hear them um i do have the buyer should still be set up the way i left it before and right now they should be idling at about 1500 rpm also but yeah from the front of the case the led lights cool because we've got the uh uh filter here at the front here the dust filter and everything the grill so all you can really see through the grill is just the hub of that fan glowing really dramatically thanks for watching i am blunty and we'll catch you next time <laughs> I can't believe that worked first time.
Who knew? Actually, come to think of it, I can't believe that worked the first time. Where's all the drama and tension if it just works? <laughs> Don't look a gift horse in the mouth, Blunty. Just, just move on. All right. 